Let's do a quick React example to get you familiar with the syntax for components. I will be using Plunker for this example. Plunker is a playground tool where we can test our JavaScript, HTML, and CSS right there in the browser. No need to install or configure anything. Go ahead and click that Launch Editor button. You'll see this three tabs interface here by default. Let's hide this popular packages tab and instead show the live preview tab. The first tab is the files we're going to be working with. The second tab is where we're going to edit them. And the third tab will show the results of running all the files. To start working with the React library in Plunker, we need to include it first. Switch over to the React.js site and just copy the script line under Downloads and paste that in Plunker. Let's put that line at the end of the document. To work with JSX, let's rename the script extension to JSX. This will tell React to parse it as JSX. Then we can use it as a JavaScript in our HTML file. We need a starting point, an element to designate as our mount node for React. Let's make that a div with an ID of root. This will be the element where React is going to take control. Note that other elements on the page might exist without React, but that root div is what ties React to the DOM. We're ready for our first component switch over to the script.jsx file. The syntax to create a React component is react.createClass. This takes in one regular object that can have multiple properties, but the only required property on this object is the render method, which is a regular function that returns JSX. Let's make it return a button. This is a complete and very simple React component. Let's use it. To use a component, we need to give it a name we can reference. So let's put it in a variable. Call that button. The syntax to mount a component in the browser is react.render, which takes in two arguments, the component to render, which is just button in our case, and the mount node where this component should be rendered. And that is our root div, which we can reference using get element by ID, just like that. We have a button and it is rendered through a React component. Let's add some interactivity to this so far boring example. Let's make that button increment a counter on every click and display the value of that counter as the button label itself. Sounds good? So the label of that button is going to be a number, like five. And when I click that button, it will change to six, seven, eight, and so on. Since this is something that needs to be changed through the component, it belongs to the state of the component. We basically need the component to re-render itself every time the counter changes. We can't use a property here because properties are immutable. The syntax to initialize the state object of a component is this getInitialState function, which returns an object representing the state. The properties of this object are the elements of the state. For our case, we need a counter state, which should start from zero. And don't be like me and forget the comma after this function. Now to actually use this state or anything else dynamic within the JSX, we place it inside curly brackets. To reference the state, we use this.state. The this keyword refers to the component itself. We're saying 
use the counter element of this component state. We can see here how the button got rendered with the value of zero. You can try and change that state to see how the button is rendering the values you change. Perfect. We have a state and we have a button that displays that state. Now we need to change that state when we click the button. So we need to define a click handler in that button. React comes with normalized events that are easy to use. For this case, we need the onClick event. And we're going to pass it a function name, which is also to be defined on the component itself. Let's call it handleClick. And to define it, you just add it to the component core object. HandleClick is going to read the current counter out of the state, increment it, and then change the state with the new incremented value. We can use the building component function setState to change the state. The value of the new counter is going to be the value of the current counter incremented by one. And again, don't forget that comma. Let's see that working. One more time. We define an event handler for the click method. Every time you click, this function is going to be executed. The function reads the current state, increment it, and then set the state to the new value of the counter. React takes care of all of the rendering needed after these changes.